Throughout modern civilization, cities have relied on multiple modes of transportation for the movement of goods and services, but up until now, we still have yet to design the perfect metropolis. What if the answer to all our civil engineering dilemmas were the simplest one? If we designed a city with only one road? So today I'm going to be exploring this question in Cities Skylines 2, the most realistic city builder ever created. Is it possible to create the perfect utopia in a city that has only one road? So I christened the new city, One Direction, and I set out in June of 2023. Naturally, I struck dirt with the paving of one long singular road off the end of the highway exit, Road Street, the only road in town. A two-lane, two-way road. Already, we had completely eliminated the need to use traffic lights. I built a coal power plant and a groundwater pumping station, as well as a poop dumping pipe into the river nearby. With that, I set out to zone the city. Naturally, it made sense to keep the groundwater collection site clean with residential zoning nearby, and then zone the dirty industry near the power plant where the air was smoky and unfit for breathing. Blend the two zones together with commercial zones. And so the city was first zoned with power, water, and poop. But it wasn't enough. The city needed to grow. We weren't making enough money to sustain the power, water, and poop dumping, and we needed more people to suck the money out of through tax revenues. After all, demand was still soaring, so I paved the way for more road, and with it more zoning, residential, commercial, and industrial. I alternated zones to prevent pollution from upsetting everyone and polluting people's homes. Naturally, people were happy that there was no pollution or poop in their houses. I continued lengthening the road and with it the town until I arrived at the map borderline, the edge of municipal permits. Technically, it would all still count as one road if I turned back and snaked the road around to the beginning again. So I did just that and zoned more development. The town grew and as we advanced from nothing to a tiny village, Massive progress. We unlocked with it the tiles that lay beyond the city limits, advancing Road Street across the river and beyond the original town. Road Street grew yet even longer, and as I ran out of space again, I snaked it up the hill to the edge of the municipal permits. I zoned more residential areas, and the town grew once again from a tiny village to a small village. It may have been a Ponzi scheme, but it was our Ponzi scheme. So I just continued buying up more land to continue the long, snake-like track of Road Street down the next hillside and across yet another river. I made careful to place the industrial zones on the edge of the building area to make a large enough buffer to avoid sending air pollution to the houses on the opposite side. Gradually, more and more people came to develop the growing town, and in July of 2023, we reached the remarkable milestone of Large Village. Yes, the town was thriving, but with it came the inevitable growing pains. Traffic was worsening. There was a never-ending lineup of cars along the snake-like road of our town as far as the eye could see. To solve the traffic problem, we actually didn't solve the problem and it just kept getting worse. But still, the town grew for now. It leveled up from a small village to a large village, and I just kept buying more land permits all the way to the edge of the neighboring mountain range. Then I just kept paving more and more winding road, but I was smart about it. I zoned the industrial zones on the edge of the city, blowing the dangerous pollution away from us and toward the wilderness beyond, and then I created a massive commercial zone buffer in the middle to keep it away from our homes. By this point in the city's development, traffic was becoming dense, and above all, thick, all bottlenecked at the entrance to the city. To solve the traffic dilemma, we employed the strategy of adding more lanes to the road. Overnight, Road Street grew from a meager two lanes to a whopping eight lanes. That's four times as many lanes. Then I expanded the highway exit to the town from one lane to seven lanes, more than anyone had ever asked for. But it was enough to fix the problem. As I snaked my way into the town, paving eight lanes instead of just two, no one was happy about it, and I also destroyed 50% of the homes as I widened the road. But ultimately, these are the difficult choices someone needed to make as mayor, and that someone was me. For example, what was I supposed to do when the cars were driving at a 90 degree angle upward toward the sky, causing a systemic and never ending traffic jam on the corner of Road Street? Other mayors might have decided to repave the road, but instead, I destroyed someone's house 
and then repaved the road, solving the problem for good. Congestion dissipated as the cars were pooped out through the wider roads. But still, wherever the lanes narrowed in the city, there was always a traffic jam. So gradually, I widened every last block from front to back, all throughout the city. Yes, maybe everyone's home was destroyed, but the problem was finally solved forever. For now. We didn't have enough money for any of this, so naturally the best solution was to lower the health care funding, the water service funding, and the road funding too. Taxes were raised. This sort of solved most of the financial woes. I turned my eyes to the infrastructure. By August, I'd realized that the city had the problem that if for some reason you wanted to legally turn around in your car, you would have to drive to the very end of the city in order to complete a legal U-turn tens of miles through the entire town, and then all the way back again just to escape. Unfortunately, this affected municipal building radii. So naturally, the ideal solution was just to put roundabouts everywhere so that people could turn around at them. Not traditional roundabouts, since there was only one road, but at least this allowed for the turning around of cars at regular intervals throughout the city. This allowed us to place parks all throughout the town and actually get a decent radius of pleasure in the neighborhoods nearby. As shown by the visualization of the town, wherever the streets are green, the residents were experiencing greater pleasure and contentment and gaiety due to their proximity to a park. Happiness rose. I continued to lengthen the road. By now, though, the financial situation was beginning to look grim. We were operating our budget at a normal deficit month to month. So in response to the challenging conditions, I employed the well-known state-sponsored Ponzi scheme of building hundreds of parks right next to each other to level up the town and make it look like we were doing great. From large village, to grand village, to tiny town, to a busy town, and then to a great town, all to secure eight million dollars of funding. and. Then, actually, as it turns out, just destroy the town. I had decided there was too much wrong with this place. Eight lanes of traffic simply would not work in the end. It was not scalable, and there was little incentive in the end for visitors and tourists to drive all the way to the far end of town. And it didn't make much sense to keep going, so I'd have to restart somehow. I know this seems very late in the challenge, but I needed to do it for the money. I brainstormed a more effective, even if unconventional, solution. The highway. Now I had enough money to buy land permits for the entire thing, end to end in the region. And so I did just that. I destroyed the town, depaved the roads, and then I widened the highway into a pair of two seven-lane roads, a total of 14 lanes. A width to accommodate the anticipated through traffic, I zoned the zones residential, commercial, and industrial, all by the highway side. But what about when people wanted to turn around in their cars? The answer was exactly the same as before. Roundabouts. But this time just humorously large, with insane, unsafe, and unbelievable turning radii, which appeared very dangerous at first glance. People moved in by the droves. One direction. Highway town. Now you didn't even need to get off at a highway exit anymore because you were already there. Which, all this brought me to my final, logical conclusion. If a road could be extended from two lanes to eight lanes to 14 lanes and so on, who was to say that there should be any limit on the number of lanes going in either direction? With this insight, I did what any reasonable human being in my shoes would do and extended the road to 28 lanes, 42 lanes, and so on until all of one direction was just one massive two-way street, tens of lanes in either direction. Sure, it divides and branches, giving way to structures and development, but in its essence it was a single road. The largest among roads, but a road nonetheless. Anyway, people didn't really like it. As it turns out, merging from 98 lanes into 7 lanes in the space of only 100 meters is simply too risky to attract any new migrants, so the city unfortunately went horribly bankrupt and everyone died. The rest is just a faint memory, never to be seen again. The end. And that, my friends, is the forgotten story of One Direction. I almost said erection for so much of the story, but I did my best not to. 
Anyway, I'm an ambiguous amphibian. A major thanks to my patrons, who have never been in a head-on collision due to the fortunate occurrence of roundabouts in the town. Until next time.